Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of this video. Today we are going to be looking at Medical Compu in Cameroon and we are going to be looking at Chemistry 2017. For those of you who are new on this channel, please don't forget to subscribe because that will encourage us to upload more content. Thank you. Question 1 says, Consider the equilibrium reaction below. I have been given an equilibrium reaction whereby we have the decomposition or the breakdown of sulfur dioxide to give sulfur dioxide plus oxygen, which is an endothermic reaction. A reaction whereby heat is absorbed from the surrounding by the system. And we have been asked, how will the equilibrium amount of sulfur dioxide change in each of the following cases? The first one, oxygen is added. Now, if oxygen is added to this equilibrium system, we want to know how the amount of sulfur dioxide is going to vary or change. Now, the first thing for us to be able to detect this change, we must be able to state the Chatelier's principle correctly. The Chatelier's principle states that when an external stress is applied on a reversible reaction at equilibrium, the equilibrium position is going to shift in a direction that tries to annul or cancel the effect. It therefore implies that in the reversible reaction, whereby oxygen is a product and there's an increase in the amount of oxygen or an increase in the concentration of the product. Therefore, from the Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium position should shift in a direction that tries to decrease the equilibrium amount of oxygen. And if you try to decrease the amount of oxygen, it then implies that the backward reaction is going to be favored or the equilibrium position is going to shift to the left. And if equilibrium position shifts to the left, it then implies that there is going to be an increase in the equilibrium amount of sulfur trioxide as a result of an increase in the volume of oxygen. And as a result, the best answer is going to be B, which says that the amount of sulfur trioxide is going to increase. Now, question 2 says the temperature is decreased. Now, one thing that we must understand here is that for the, for the breakdown reaction of sulfur trioxide, it was precise. The reaction is endothermic. For an endothermic reaction, the fall is always going to be favored by an increase in temperature because an endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs heat from the surrounding. It therefore implies that increasing the temperature is going to favor the forward reaction. And therefore, if the temperature of the system is instead decreased, the endothermic reaction or the, if the temperature of the system is decreased, equilibrium is going to shift in a direction that tries to increase the temperature, which is going to be the backward reaction. And as a result, the amount of sulfur trioxide is going to increase. And the answer is A. Question 3 says, some argon and inert gas is added at constant, at constant pressure. Now, adding an inert gas to an equilibrium mixture increases the total pressure of the system but has no effect on the equilibrium concentrations of reactants and products since they don't interact. Argon is an inert gas and therefore does not take part in chemical reactions. It therefore implies that introducing a sample of argon in the equilibrium reaction is just going to mean that there should be an increase in the pressure of the system but, no, it, but there's going to be no change in the concentration of either reactant or product. And in this case, the answer is going to be C because the equilibrium amount of sulfur trioxide is going to remain unchanged. Question 4 says, if the volume of the container is decreased. If the volume of the container is decreased, from what we know, if volume decreases, there's going to be an increase in pressure. And there's an increase in pressure, equilibrium must shift in a direction that tries to decrease the pressure. So now we know that from our balance equation, we have two moles of gas on the left hand side and we have three moles of gas on the right hand side. It therefore implies that if the pressure of the system is increased, equilibrium should shift in a direction that has fewer moles of gas, which the direction is going to have less pressure. And therefore, equilibrium is going to shift to the left or the backward reaction is going to be favored. And as a result, the answer is going to be A, as a result of an increase in the equilibrium amount of sulfur trioxide. Question 5 says, given the reaction below, you have that. Now that we ask the oxidation state of bromine in that bromine ion is calculate oxidation state. The first thing is we should be able to determine what an oxidation state is. An oxidation state is any positive or negative number or zero assigned to an element 
in an uncombined state or in a compound with the application of certain rules. Now, for us to do this, we must be able to understand one thing. Oxygen generally has an oxidation state of minus 2 since it is a non-metal because metals have positive oxidation, positive oxidation numbers while non-metals have negative oxidation numbers. And uh, from what we can see, when oxygen is bonded, whenever oxygen is bonded to a peroxide, its oxidation state is minus 1. But in other compounds, it is minus 2. It therefore implies that to calculate the oxidation state of bromine in this compound, we let the oxidation state of bromine to be equal to x. Then I will have three oxygen atoms, where the oxidation of each oxygen atom is going to be minus 2. And the overall charge of the compound is minus 1. When we, when we add that, we are going to have that x is going to be positive 5. And as a result, the oxidation state of bromine in that compound is going to be positive 5. And the answer is C. Question 6 says, The oxidation state of bromine in the bromide ion is, From what we can see, we have the bromide ion. Oxidation state, as we already stated above, was a positive or negative number or zero that was assigned to an element in an uncombined state or in a compound by applying certain rules. So now, from what we can see above, the bromide ion, being simply alone, has an oxidation state of minus one, giving it an answer of D. Question seven says, the oxidizing agent in this reaction is. Now, the first thing for us to identify the oxidizing agent in this reaction is we should be able to define an oxidizing agent. An oxidizing agent is that species in a reaction that is going to accept hydrogen, accept electrons, and give off oxygen to become reduced. It therefore implies from the equation we can see that A, which is the bromate ion, is going to accept, is going to give off its oxygen to become bromine, resulting to a decrease in oxidation state from positive 5 to 0. And therefore the answer is going to be A. Question 8 says the reducing agent in this reaction is. The reducing agent in a reaction is that species that is going to be oxidized or that species that is going to accept oxygen, accept, give up electrons and give up hydrogen to become oxidized. And the answer is going to be A, the bromide ion. Question 9 says, consider the scheme below. We have been given a, certain, we have been given a series of certain equations and we have been asked to identify the energy A of calcium. When we look at the balance equation, we can see that from calcium solid to calcium gas involves a change of state from solid to gas and therefore the energy in this case is going to be sublimation. Now, sometimes you're going to see a question and instead of seeing sublimation there, you're going to see atomization. Atomization is the same thing as sublimation. It definitely implies that in this case, our best answer is going to be sublimation. Dissociation cannot be correct because dissociation deals with the breaking of a bone. Reason why B is going to be wrong. Now, the next question, so the answer is going to be C. Question 10 says, energy B of chlorine. When we go back to our scheme, we see that the energy B of chlorine represents the dissociation energy of chlorine, which is an endothermic reaction, because it's going to lead to the breaking of bones. Chlorine being a molecule is made up of two chlorine atoms held together by a single covalent bond. It therefore implies that heat energy is going to be required to break the bond and liberate two chlorine atoms. And this energy is known as dissociation. So the answer is going to be B. Question 11 says energy C of calcium. From what we can see from the balanced chemical equation, calcium is losing the first electron to form calcium ion. And this is known as the first ionization energy which is the minimum amount of energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of a gaseous atom to form one mole of a unipositive gaseous ion, making the answer to be C. Question 12 says, energy D of calcium. Energy D of calcium, we can see a situation whereby the calcium ion is accepting, is giving up another electron to form calcium 2+. So here, we can see that Calcium is giving up another electron to form calcium 2 plus and this energy is known as the second ionization energy which is the amount of energy that is absorbed when a gaseous ion, a unipositive gaseous ion gives up one mole of electron to form one mole of a dipositive gaseous ion. So the answer is going to be B. Question 13 says energy E of chlorine is Energy E of chlorine represents the electron affinity 
which is the heat energy that is released when a gaseous atom accepts electrons. So we can see that here the answer is going to be D. Question 14 says, a compound with a molecular formula C7H8 is, now C7H8, this question, from the normal law of organic chemistry that we know, we know that it cannot be a straight chain hydrocarbon. It therefore implies that it can only be a ring compound. So given that it's a ring compound, we're supposed to try the alternatives from the question that we can see out from the from the propositions that have been given below, we can already see that benzene is eliminated because benzene is C6H6. But we have C7H8, meaning that we have an additional hydrogen, we have an additional carbon atom and an additional two hydrogen atoms. Therefore, it implies that the answer is going to be A, which is methyl benzene, also known as toluene. Question 15 says, a molecule is, from what we already know, a molecule is a group of atoms held together by a covalent bond. Example, the chlorine molecule made up of two chlorine atoms is held together by a single covalent bond. Why a water molecule, where we have, we have oxygen atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms, has two simple covalent bonds? And the answer is going to be B. Question 16 says, the definition of mole is, we have A, B, C, D, E. Now, from what we already know, we say a mole is any amount of substance that contains as many elementary particles as there are carbon atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon 12 isotope. Now, looking at the alternative that have been given to, of, to us, we can see that the best answer here is going to be B, which says the amount of any substance contains the same number of identical entities as there are in exactly 12 grams of carbon 12 isotope. So the answer is going to be B. Question 17 says, CnH2n plus 2 is the general formula of the homologous series, which is a member of this, which is a member with this characteristic. Now I've been given a molecular formula or the general molecular formula. Now we'll look at the formula CnH2n plus 2 is the general molecular formula for alkenes. CnH2n is the general molecular formula for alkenes, and the CnH2n minus 2 is the general molecular formula for alkynes. So now from what we have seen, we, just look at, we have to look at the propositions. Now we have prefixes and suffixes. Now the prefix for an alkene can vary depending on which the number of carbon atoms. While the suffix or the suffix always ends with a, a n e. So when we look at the alternatives that have been given to us, we can see that the answer is going to be C, which is propane. Question 18 says the equation for the enthalpy of hydration for a magnesium ion is we have been given a series of equations and we have been asked to identify which of them correctly corresponds to the enthalpy of hydration of magnesium ion. Now enthalpy of hydration is the enthalpy change when one mole of a gaseous ion dissolves with sufficient water to give an infinitely dilute solution and this enthalpy is always negative. So the answer is going to be B. Question 19 says, which of the following substances is capable of damaging the ozone layer? Now from the alternatives that have been given to us, we know that chlorofluorocarbons contain both fluorine and chlorine, which are destructive to the ozone layer, to the ozone found in the stratosphere, and thus ozone layer depletion. Therefore, the best answer is going to be D, chlorofluorocarbons. Question 20 says, which of the following changes will lead to the greatest increase in the rate of the following endothermic reaction. Now, from the Chatelier's principle and what we already know, one very important thing for us to understand is that the forward reaction in this equation is endothermic. And whenever the forward reaction is endothermic, the forward reaction is always going to be favored by an increase in temperature. Now, we have been asked for the greatest increase. It is better from the alternative. If we, increase, if we decrease the temperature by 15%, Instead, the rate of the reaction of the endothermic reaction is going to decrease because being as an endothermic reaction is going to be favored by an increase in temperature. So A is already wrong. Now B says temperatures increase by 15%. Initial concentration of nitrogen and oxygen stay the same. Now this one is still correct because if temperatures increase by 15%, it's going to lead to an increase in the, forward, in the rate of the forward reaction. But now the concentration of nitrogen and oxygen remaining the same is not too perfect. Given that D says 
The temperature increased by 15% and the initial concentration of nitrogen and oxygen increased by 15%. So if the temperature of the system increases, there's going to be an increase in the rate of the power reaction because it is endothermic. Now also, given that nitrogen and oxygen are reactants, an increase in their concentration is going to lead to an equilibrium is going to lead to a shift of the equilibrium position to the right, leading to an increase in the amount of nitrogen monoxide, making D to be the best correct answer. Now, for those of you who are new on this channel, please don't forget to subscribe.